So, my dear friends, you want to tell a joke. There are many different types of jokes, which I'm not going to go into in any detail today, because you can watch that on the talk that came with this talk, which is humor in teaching and speaking. But this is more about the skill and technique of telling jokes well. Now, there is a fundamental rule of joke telling which you must never break. And that is, don't ever laugh at your own jokes. That kind of degrades the whole experience for the listener. Now you hope, of course, that your listener will laugh at your joke. But there are a few reasons why they may not laugh at your joke. One potential problem is they didn't understand the joke. This has happened to me on occasion. And then I use it as an opportunity to simply explain the joke to the listener. I was talking to a young girl, I think eight or nine years old, and uh, I, I tried a joke on her. I thought she would get the joke, but she didn't quite get it. And it has to do usually with vocabulary and life experience and general knowledge and all that sorts of things. Uh, I'll try the joke on you and see if you get it. And then I will explain how to explain it so that then you will get it if you didn't get it the first time. So it's a short joke. Short jokes are convenient because they're easy to remember. They don't, uh, re they don't require a lot of um, manipulation or memory or dramatics. So here's the short joke. A woodsman was in the woods and he was chopping down trees. And he began to chop down a tree and the tree said, stop, stop, don't chop me. I'm a talking tree. And the woodsman said, yes, and you will die a log. OK, now, this girl did not laugh at that point. I don't know. Did you laugh at that point? If you did, it's because you got the double entendre, the idea of dialogue, meaning a conversation, and die a log. But I had to talk her through this. So I said, OK, first of all, what do you call it in a story when the characters are talking to each other? And she said, dialogue. So she knew the word. And then I said, so what happens when you chop down a tree? And she said, it falls. I said, yes, and does it live? She said, no, it dies. And what is it after it's a dead tree that's fallen? A log. And then she cracked up. You see? So she put the two and two together. So there is a possibility you will have to explain the joke to your audience. Now, sometimes it's just hopeless. If people don't know, you can't explain. Uh, for example, um, the countries of Finland, Norway, and Sweden have begun painting very large barcodes on the side of their ships. Do you know why? That is so when the ships return to port, they can scan the Navy in. Now, if you don't have geography, it's hopeless. But you run the risk. You run the risk. Now, another kind of joke problem is when you tell the joke badly. And so it's just not funny. Or you give away too much in the clue. Right? Here's a joke that a young man told me. He told me this joke, and then he said that he had made it up himself. And I was fairly impressed. Um, he said, um, you know, there was, a, there was a zoo, and there are many pandas. Uh, only the pandas started dying very rapidly. Consequently, 16 out of the 18 pandas had died within just a few days. And so the panda keeper went to the head of the zoo and said, sir, I don't know what's going on. 16 of our 18 pandas have died. And the zookeeper said, well, it's a, uh, I think you could guess this, actually. Panda die. It's kind of a COVID joke. Pandemic. It's a pandemic. All right, that joke is borderline good, but it's got 
just too clue. It's got too much there. It's got a clue. So you want to be careful about jokes that are too obvious. Also, you want to be careful about jokes that are simply not funny. Um, most of the why do the chicken cross the road jokes are just not funny. And then, of course, humor is somewhat subjective. For example, I have a joke that I think is hilarious. But <clears throat> Julie Walker, whom you all know from the 12 Days videos and our podcast, she does not think this joke is funny. And it's either I'm not smart or she's not smart. Because if we were both the same smart, she would think it was funny or I would think it was not. But now you're curious about the joke, so very short. Why did the egg cross the road? It had the inclination. OK, it's a double entendre. You're inclined to do something, but you also have an incline, and that's why the egg crossed the road. Even after explaining this joke to her, she still does not think it is a particularly funny joke. So in that case, you learn your audience. Now, when you want to remember a joke, okay, and this is the tricky part, the best thing to do is make, can you guess what I'm going to say? If you've taken any of my writing classes, you can guess. A keyword outline. In fact, I didn't think of this myself, oddly. Actually, I've thought of very few things myself. Usually, I just steal ideas from other people. But I'm traveling around the country now for 20 years teaching writing classes to kids, and I always start writing classes with a joke. And so on the second day of the classes, this is when I was teaching four days in a row, on the second day of classes, I noticed one of the boys was writing while I was telling the joke. And so I kind of looked over, and I was curious, and I saw he was making a keyword outline. This, of course, made me very happy. Anytime I see anyone making a keyword outline, I'm happy. So I got a little bit closer, and I realized what the keywords he was writing were directly from my joke. So let's try an experiment. You get a piece of paper, and if you don't have one handy, you can just stop this video till you do. Get yourself a piece of paper, and uh, I'm going to tell a joke kind of in slow motion so it doesn't go too fast. And what you want to do is kind of listen to each statement that I make, each, each sentence of the joke. And then what you would do is put down one or two, maybe three keywords. And as you know, when we make keyword outlines, we put commas in between the keywords that would remind you of that sentence. Right? So if, if, for example, this won't be my joke, but if I, if I started a joke like this, a guy walked into a bar. OK, you don't need to write the whole thing. What would you write? Guy, comma, bar. That's all you need. OK, the punchline to that joke is, ouch. All right, but now let's get to our keyword note-taking practice. All right, so to help you, I'm going to tell a joke. And I want to, I'm going to emphasize the keywords so you know which ones to write down. Now, don't, don't feel like you have to spell all the words correctly because this is just for you. This isn't something you're going to turn in or show someone else or anything. This is just for you to learn the joke. So you can go practice the joke, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and then you can tell the joke. And then, of course, the trick of remembering the joke is to organize it kind of into a system, and tell the joke often enough that you don't forget it. OK, so here we go. A young man went ice fishing for the first time. Okay, You should have written something like young or man, or maybe you wrote young and a little stick figure, and ice fishing. That's all you need. All right. He cut his hole and dropped his line. Hole, line. He was there 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and he hadn't had a bite. OK, you probably wrote something like 15, 20, 30, 40, bite with the circle on the line through, no bite. 
He was frustrated because there was another guy, an older man, about 100 feet down the ice, and he was catching lots of fish. Okay, hopefully you wrote down something like, older man, lots, or older man catching. Did you get something like that? Okay, we're going to keep going now. And so um, he went down and he said to the man, I see you're catching a lot of fish. I'm not doing so well. Is there some tip or trick you could share with me? Okay, so what did you write down? Asked tip trick or said tip trick question mark? Something like that. Okay. The old guy said to him, mm, 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 mm. Okay, now that's a tough one. I don't know how you write down mm, 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 but you got to figure that out. It's your problem, not mine. You're making the notes. I'm telling the joke. All right. The young man said, I don't understand what you said. Don't understand or understand. No. Okay. The old guy said, uh -huh. mm, 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 mm. and the young guy said, I'm so sorry. I just cannot understand. You keeping up? Sorry, can't understand. Then the old guy says, I said, keep your worms warm. OK, now you can't really write a keyword for <coughs> but you might put in parentheses, you know, spit in your hand. So like this would be stage directions, spit in hand, right? And then keep your worms warm, keep worms warm. OK, so now you've got the whole joke right there in keyword outline form. And so what you want to do is practice first not telling this joke to someone, but practice first telling it to yourself. Say it again and again and again so that you can then say it without looking at the keyword outline. But that keyword outline is going to give you a visual map of the events that have to happen in the joke. Right? Young ice fish, cut whole line, not catch, 45 minutes, old guy, fit, uh, catching, uh, ask tip, um, mm, 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 don't understand, mm, 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 still don't understand, spit, <laughs> keep worms warm. Okay, you have that, you see it, you see it, and that's going to reinforce your auditory memory of me telling you the joke. So practice secretly in your room or in your tree fort or in the bathroom or somewhere until you can do it without missing any of the pieces. Then once you've got all the pieces in your mind and you don't need the notes, then you go practice on someone. Now, I recommend you practice on someone who does not already know this joke, which would mean if your parents or siblings are watching this with you, that's no good. You've got to go find someone else. I have discovered in watching my grandchildren that grandparents make a great practice audience because they adore you no matter what you do. So even if you tell the joke badly, they'll think it's cute and they'll laugh. And this will build up your confidence to try on a, a bit harder audience, like a father, right? Uh, or a friend who may or may not uh, be kind to you if you bungle the joke. But if you practice enough and keep finding new people to practice on, then you can master this particular joke. And if you can master this particular joke, you can master any joke that you can hear. Now, if you have a book of jokes, then that's almost easier because you simply need to make a keyword outline from the text on the page. And if you've used any of our writing materials, you know how that works. And so then you practice verbally, practice verbally, until you have it basically the flow memorized in your brain. And you don't have to tell it exactly the same way every time. In fact, telling it exactly the same way sounds like a memorized speech, 
and it's not quite as energetic or vibrant as it could be if you kind of vary the way you tell something. Now, lots of jokes are enhanced by acting skills. And acting skills basically would include being able to have good facial expressions, maybe sound effects like <laughs> right? Um, gestures can add a huge amount to the joke. And if you're so inclined, you might even be able to do some accents. Accents can enhance the dramatic effect of the joke. So I'm going to tell you another joke. And this joke uses all of those features. And so if you just tell it straight, it's one thing. But if you put in all the features, it's just better. So I'm going to actually tell you the joke twice. Once with no enhancements, and then the second time with some enhancements. So here you go. You'll hear the joke twice, which should make it easier for you to make your keyword outline and practice this thing if you want to learn it. So here's the, the plain vanilla version. A pirate is talking to his sailors. He has a wooden leg from his knee down, a metal hook instead of a right hand, and a black patch over his right eye. One of the sailors says, Captain, how did you lose your leg? He said, well, I was in a battle, and a cannonball flew and hit my foot and blew off the bottom of my leg, but I quickly wrapped a tourniquet around it, and we continued the fight, and we won except I've got this to show for it. Another sailor says, Captain, how did you lose your hand? He says, well, we were in a battle uh, attacking the fort, and I was holding off three soldiers myself with my saber, but I slipped on a banana peel and lost my balance, and he sliced off my wrist. But I quickly wrapped a tourniquet around the stump, continued the fight, and we won the battle. And then, of course, another sailor says, how did you lose your eye? And he says, well, I was on the deck of my ship, and I was looking up at the sails, and a pelican flew right overhead and dropped a little, you know what, right in my eye. And one of the sailors says, Captain, you're saying that you lost your eye from bird droppings? And the captain said, well, to tell the truth, it was the very day after I had got my hook. OK, all right. It's got a humor element. Some of you may be chuckling. Some of you may not have got the picture in order for it to be funny. So as a joke teller, your responsibility is to create a bigger, better image so that people are more likely to get the whole scene that is built up with humor in this way. So I'm going to now tell the same joke. You can keep working on your keyword outline, because I didn't slow down. So it might have gone by pretty fast this time with enhancements. So there's this old pirate. And he's in the tavern drinking grog with the soldiers. And he's got a wooden leg from his knee down. And he's got a sharp silver hook in place of his right hand. And he's got a black patch over his right eye. And one of the sailors says, well, Captain, tell us, how'd you lose your leg? And the pirate said, argh, because that's what pirates always say. Me leg. Well, when we was attacked by British men of war, and the cannonballs were flying, and one of those flew, and it landed right on me foot and blew off me leg. But I quickly wrapped a tourniquet around the stump, and then we continued the fight, and we took the prize. But I got this to show for it. I guess he'd have to hold his drink with his other hand. <laughs> Technical glitch. Then, a little while later, another sailor said, well, Captain, tell us, how did you lose your hand? And the captain said, "Ah, because that's what pirates always say. Man, well, we was attacking the fort at St. Kitts, and I was holding off three British regulars with me saber, but I slipped on a banana peel. Sometimes people laugh just at the banana peel. I'm not quite sure why. I slipped on a banana peel, lost my balance, and one of the enemies sliced off my wrist, but I skewered him with my dagger, and I quickly wrapped a tourniquet around the stump, 
and we continued the fight. We took the fort, but I got this to show for it. And then another sailor said, how did you lose your eye? Hmm, <clears throat> yeah, well, I was on the deck of my ship. I was looking up at the sails and a pelican flew right overhead and dropped a little you-know-what right in my eye. And then one of the sailors says, Captain, are you saying you just lost your eye because of bird droppings? The captain said, well, to be perfectly honest, that did happen the very day after I had got me hook. All right, now that, that's better. You, see, you get the picture, don't you? So the accents, the facial expressions, the little side comments, and then the final gesture of the hook. Because if you had bird droppings in your eye, what would you naturally do? Forgetting, of course, that you no longer had a hand, but you had a sharp silver hook. It's, it's a grisly ending, which many jokes are. In fact, one definition of humor is um, benign tragedy, right? When something is tragic, only it's not real or nothing really bad happens. That can be funny. For example, so if I fell down the stairs and didn't get hurt, you might laugh at my clumsiness of falling down the stairs. That would be benign tragedy. If I fall down the stairs, break my spine, and am paralyzed for the rest of my life, you should not laugh. This is not funny. This is not benign or harmless tragedy. This is real tragedy. So fortunately, uh, no real pirates were hurt in the making of that joke. So, that's an example of uh, how to learn a joke, practice it until you have it memorized, then try it out on people, and as you try it, see if you can bring up some of your acting skills. Don't overdo it, but bring in some acting skills with vocal modulation, voices if you can, gestures that enhance the picture, and I think that you can become an excellent teller of good jokes.